Well, back in the day, it sure wasn't easy for women trying to make it in male-dominated fields. Frances Olson knows that firsthand. She rose to become of, uh, to become one of Regina's top realtors at one time, but when she started out, nobody would hire a woman in the male-dominated field here in the Queen City. Another local businesswoman, Cindy Knorr, has made a documentary about Frances Olson. Great title, Up the Ladder in High Heels. Mm. They both join me now in... In studio. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Get to sneak a peek, Francis, and see if you're still wearing heels. <laughs> no, you've left the heels behind, <laughs> hey? <laughs> Cindy, tell me a little bit about uh, why why you wanted to make this documentary. Okay, I'm a life coach with Synergy Coaching, and I study successful people. I've I've done it for many years. I'm crazy about personal development, and. Uh, Tony Robbins says success leaves clues. So you can learn from other successful people. And uh, I just thought we have pretty successful people right here in our own community. So. Yeah, yeah. And in, and in a field, as we said, when years ago, women really weren't getting ahead, right? That's right. Yeah. So, Francis, what was your reaction when you heard that that Cindy wanted to make a documentary well, about your life and your career? I was so honored that... She would do this because I haven't worked for 33 years. And for people to still remember me, it's magic. Yeah, you obviously left a, left an impression. Yes. Was it hard, um, Cindy, to decide what to put in and, and what to leave out? Oh, my goodness. We had over 30 hours of footage. So, yes, it's very hard. And Fran says that the documentary is too short and that there's things that <laughs> she thought would have been in there that aren't. But, yeah, it's there, it was really hard. So where pick. do you start? Where do you begin the story? Um, it's kind of mixed up. It's not chronological. Mm-hmm. So uh, it goes through her whole life, actually. Okay. So All right. Uh, we started in a limo. She's she's kind of a fancy lady, oh. so we we rented a limo and we drove to Moose Jaw and we recorded while we were driving and there was a few things that we did in Moose Jaw. So okay. she has a glass of wine and telling some stories in a limo. Okay, well I like that already. Wine and a limo. <laughs> I'm familiar with the wine part, not so much with uh, with the limo. Um, what was it like? How did you even get started in real estate, Francis? When when it was all men back then? Well, uh, my husband worked. He was one of the first employees for SGI. And uh, in those days, we knew Tommy Douglas and CM Fines all personally. Your friends? Yeah. And uh, so he was there 17 years. And when the Thatcher government came in, they went through all the government offices and fired the upper echelon. So he came home. They gave him no severance pay. He had six weeks holidays and hadn't taken, and he, he, they just said, go home. That wouldn't happen today. No. And we had no money, and we had four children, and I, I wasn't working because I was brought up that married women don't work. And uh, I had dyslexia, and so I had a a real struggle in school because they didn't know what dyslexia was in those days. And so I quit in grade 10 and took a a typing course for a year. And uh, so I had worked at the Army Navy when I was 15, and I loved working there, but I hated being a secretary. It wasn't for me at all. So when he said, you'll have to go to work, I said, I'm too stupid. Oh, did you really think yeah, that about because, yourself? Yeah, because oh. my brothers all went to university and they called me stupid. And it was and dyslexia. And then the wow. amazing thing was I ended up speaking at universities right across Canada. They made me a university chair and an honorary professor. Like magic just happened to my life. Wow. And my mother and dad were so against me going to work, and they called Ralph everything oh, for making your me husband. go to work. <laughs> and, you know, that, that was the best thing that ever happened to our family. But, but what was it like, though? So you got into real estate, and it was all men. 
What What was it like um, trying to get into that world? Well, you know, there there was no real estate courses. All I had to do was get a license from the provincial government. So I never took a real estate course at all. But how did the men react to you and, coming uh, into their well, world? Well, they, they called us hooers, and we were sleeping around with clients to sell houses. Really? And so I, I, my husband said, don't worry, honey, they're knocking you all the way up the ladder. <laughs> he said, they're saying your name, and pretty soon everyone will know who you are. And so I was really careful about my appearance, how I dressed, and how the my ladies had to wear business suits and be uh, very business like always and we we took over Regina and it was in a I was in business before the electronic age, so I connected with people. Yeah. And that's the part I love most. Yeah, the is, networking is and the, the the connecting with yeah. real people. So, Cindy, what for for women now? Um, what's the lesson? You said there are secrets in there and clues as to success and how Frances achieved what she did. What would you say is the biggest lesson in there? Fran just mentioned it. She made reference to connections, and that's what I think is missing nowadays, especially with social media. It's so easy to just put your stuff out on, on the different social media platforms, but actually getting face-to-face with people and finding out from them what their problems are and how you can solve them and just getting to know them. And that's what Fran was, she was famous for. And she still does that. Mm -hmm. She still comes to the Regina Women's Network, and she's involved in the community, like actually going out and meeting people. Wow. Well, such a pleasure to have you both in. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us this morning. Really appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate it, Sheila. All right. Take care.